Welcome to my latest video. In this one, I will be doing a review of my recently acquired O1 bench style digital voltmeter, model XDM1241. I purchased this meter to enhance my testing when creating electrical engineering content. This video includes a quick review of the DVM features and capabilities, a look at what comes in the retail box, a quick test of its accuracy against my very accurate Fluke DVM, and how to install and use the O1 software. By the way, if you're interested in getting a copy of that software, take a look at the video notes below to find links to the installation files. Let's start by discussing some key features of this DVM. It's portable and easy to use, having a 3.5 inch 480 by 320 high resolution display with DC voltage accuracy up to 0.05%, providing a dual inline display for some measurements and a built-in rechargeable lithium battery. It has multi-function capabilities such as measuring AC or DC levels, resistance, and capacitance. It provides true RMS AC measurements. It includes trend analysis shown in chart mode and works with SCPI controls. It has fuse protection when testing current, having an anti-burn design that is both safe and reliable. Also, the fuses are easy to replace by removing the back cover. It also includes other advanced features such as diode testing, circuit continuity and temperature measurements, and many others. The features supported include a data recording function that uses either auto or manual capturing of up to 1,000 measurements, math functions that can perform min, max, average, and relative comparison on sampled data, a dual display mode that's helpful when testing AC values, such as voltage or current showing frequency. Finally, with the software installed, it can be connected to a PC that displays measurements or transfers recorded data. When so connected, it uses the standard commands for programming instruments protocol, abbreviated SCPI. Let's now see what's in the box. Okay, here's the box. It's open. Whoops. Oh, we got a package that looks like it has a user manual in it, although it says quick start guide. I did find the user manual, the full user manual online, and there'll be links down in the bottom of this video to that. What else we got here? Oh, a detailed specification sheet. So you get all the specifications of the accuracy and other features that are included in this. Okay. Here's the meter itself. Put this over here for a second, see what else in the box. Oh, we got a cable. This is the cable that's used to connect from USB-B to USB-A so that you can go ahead and connect up the software to this thing and control it and monitor it. Okay, we'll see that being used in a minute. We have a set of probes. Standard, standard type probes it looks like. It's got the little caps on the front to pr protect the points. Yeah, okay. So just that. Uh, we have a power cable. It looks like a barrel connector to a USB-A, and sure enough, there is a barrel connector here. But it also takes USB Type-C as its power, which is probably the way I'll do it. I do not see a brick in here, though. So I'll have to provide my own for doing the charging of it. And then these, I believe these are a high power, high voltage connectors. So if you want to connect up to um, the higher voltage, then you would put these on, on the top of the probes. You probably have to remove the very tips of the probes in order to get it off. Oh, the tips, not the back. And then pull this out and see, does this go in here? Uh, might go, yeah, looks like it might. Okay, so I'll leave it without that for now, but that's if you're measuring high voltage, because this thing can go quite high, as I recall. I think it could handle uh, maybe a thousand volts here, thousand volt capability. Okay, uh, and then that's, that's what's included in the box, okay? Okay, let me go ahead and charge this, and then we'll come right back and see what it looks like. Let me, uh, let me get a brick and charge it. Okay, so here I have a three amp brick with a USB-C connector on the end of it. And I'll plug this in and then we'll plug it into the outlet. Oh, 
and a red light comes on over here. So we'll just let it charge up until it changes colors, which I believe that'll happen once it's fully charged. And we'll see what happens. Okay, it took about an hour, but finally we got a green light here, which means the power is fully charged. I'll disconnect this now. I'm bringing in a power supply so we can uh, do some testing. I've also got my, my fluke meter here and we'll power everything on. Let's try powering this on. Power on bar and it's on. So I can put some probes into the power supply and I'll put the probes on the DVM itself. And we'll see what kind of readings we get. We're already on DC volts. If we do AC, you'll see the range will change to DCI, which is DC current. And it says ADC, so this is voltage DC, ADC is current. Let's turn the power supply on. I will connect it up. Right now we have it set for 8 volts. I'm going to change it to maybe 6 or 5. Let's just 5. So we got 5. It's not showing here yet because I didn't activate it. I've got to actually hit the output button here. And we got 5.0018, which, you know, does represent the accuracy of this power supply's voltage output. But now let's check it against a fluke. Turn this guy on. That's AC, that's DC. Voltage DC. Let's turn the screen on. Let's see what we get. Okay. Oh, the fluke says 499. Which, it, oh, it rounds up. It's, it's right at the edge. 499 point something. We don't have the same resolution here on the fluke that we had on that. So I think it's about as good as a comparison we're going to get. This one actually has extra re digits of resolution, okay? So I think that proves it. The, uh, it measures 5 volts, okay? Let's raise the voltage up. 10 volts, how's that? So this says 999. That says 10.004. So on the voltage, it seems extremely good. I'm not going to get into the current on this test or most of the functions of this thing because I would take a setup with a breadboard in order to do it safely. So I'm just going to go ahead and now switch over to uh, resistors or capacitors. Okay, here I'm going to try a 1000 ohm resistor. It's kind of hard to see. It's a little small. If it is supposed to be 1000. Let me turn off the power supply. I don't need that anymore. We'll switch this to ohms resistor, RES. K ohms is defaulting range. It's auto ranging. So let me switch this now to the same thing. Let's switch this to ohms. Okay, the meter says 400 and 983 on the fluke. 983. Let me put the fluke down so you can see it here. 983. That's what the fluke says on that resistor. Let's see what this one says. 982.1. That's really close. 982.2. Takes a while to settle on some of these component measurements. That's really close. Okay, let me get a capacitor now. So I got one here. Don't know if you can see it, but that's 220 nanofarads. So let's try it on the fluke. We got to go to capacitance. And we'll check the fluke out. Check it out over here, 220. Okay, it says, takes a while with a capacitor. It's charging up, that's why it's gonna take a lot longer. So let's see how high it goes. 190, 91, 92. I'm going to call it at 195 to 200. Okay. We got to shut out the leads on this to make sure it has no charge on it anymore. And we'll try this one. Let's go to capacitance. No, that's not it. Here, this one here. Capacitance. One eighty nine, one ninety. It's faster than the fluke, actually, in getting to the, the higher numbers. Starting to slow down. 
So I'm gonna say the same thing, 195 to about 200. Okay, so that's pretty accurate on that regard. Capacitor's always flaky in testing them. Okay, so at this point, I think I will call the testing done. If we want to have another video, just put comments down below that you'd like to see me do more testing of the other scales, but I think it's, it's very accurate. Let me go ahead and pull the, the little protector off of here as long as I'm at, at it. I can grab a hold of it. There we go. That's my tear. I don't think you would have heard that. Let me turn everything off. Okay, if you go ahead and uh, download the software, the link down in the notes below, you will see these files come into a zip file. They are numbered. This is important. There's one, two, and then three, right in the front of the names of each of the different steps you have to do. If you read this document, there's a lot of errors in it, especially when it tells you how to verify whether or not the driver is installed. So let's skip that for now, and let me just show you exactly what you need to do in what order. The first one is number one, so we'll double click on that. And we basically follow these steps in just installing this. It's pretty straightforward. So at this point, you just follow along, continue the sequence of one, two, three, and then when you go into three, it's a subdirectory. So then you need to go into and run setup first, and then the DME easy control. And once all of that stuff is installed, then you're ready to test it out and make sure that it's working fine. Then to actually test it, we've got to run the device manager. And if we do that, when you see at first, it does not show any USB COM ports or the one that's already on the PC only. And then you plug in the uh, meter. What'll then happen is you'll see it suddenly pop up. And the important thing to do is make sure you understand which COM port it's assigned to. So in this case, it looks like it's COM6. So that's what you have to remember as you get into it and set up the actual meter to run. After closing the device manager, then you can go ahead and run DMM Easy, which is the actual utility, but you have to do a control and then connect. Then go down to the one that says via COM, USB COM, and you pick the proper COM port, in this case, COM5. And then you say, okay. And now you're actually connected to the meter and you're seeing what the meter has displayed. Right now we are in DC voltage, but from here we could change to whatever we want. We could change to the current, to the AC, whatever. But a good one to actually test with, which would work fine, is the actual temp for temperature. And you'll see the room temperature listed there. In this case, 288 Kelvin, which we can change to Fahrenheit. So it works very well. The only thing is make sure that you have the meter turned on, powered on that is, before you run this DMM Easy. Otherwise you will lose local control of the functions on the meter itself. So I just wanted to show you how to install it and test it and it works fine from the computer. So we can capture it as I'm doing here and uh, do whatever we want with it, save it, transfer the results from it if we tell it to do some, um, some periodic counts with the run stop. So that's it for this part of it.